Yesterday, we learned that function notation is just yet another way of saying crap you already know. It's just written in a different way. So yesterday, you learned how function notation relates to the graph. Today, I'm going to briefly talk to you about how function notation relates to an equation. So again, just like yesterday, and this is why we start off with notes on this activity instead of you doing an exploratory thing, because your background knowledge works against you in this topic because you think this means multiplication because there's an F sitting next to an X that's in parentheses. So as you should, because you've been paying attention, you should think it means multiplication, but it does not, okay? F of X is also another way of saying Y. So a lot of the time you're used to X and Y. In function notation, F of X is another way of saying Y. And if you were to say it out loud, you say f of x is how you say that. It means that f is a function of x. It means that y depends on x. f is simply the name of the function, not a variable. So you know how yesterday I talked to you about like sometimes if the equation represents height, sometimes we use an h. Um, sometimes we use a G. You see G of X a lot for, you know, no reason, okay? So the F literally just tells you the name of the function, and it's just another way of saying Y. So you notice this little graphic over here where it's like, we are all the same. That and that means exactly the same thing, okay? So even though the notation itself looks confusing because it... Take some things that are familiar to you and make them mean different things. The actual problems you're going to be expected to do are very easy. Okay? So this is kind of what you're used to seeing. If y equals negative 3x plus 1, um, it'll say you take the 2, you put it in for x, and then you just use that to solve for y, right? So instead of y equals negative 3 times x, I'm going to replace that x with the number 2. What does it mean when you've got it sitting next to something else? Multiplication, Multiplication right? So this really just means, hey, take the x out of there, substitute it with a 2, and then the word evaluate, going back to Ren's excellent, excellent question yesterday, how do you know if you're multiplying or if it's asking you to do this? It'll say evaluate instead of solve. That's how you know that you're just doing this instead of solving an equation. It'll say evaluate. So negative 3 times 2 is negative 6, of course. Negative 6 plus 1 is negative 5. So you're used to seeing a problem like this. The function notation version looks like this. Instead of saying y equals, it just says f of x equals. But guys, these two problems in these two boxes are asking you to do exactly the same thing. They're literally just being asked in a different way. So I'm going to zoom in here. Sorry, my text messages are going off, y'all. <laughs> All right, so again, this right here is just the name. Write yourself a little note. Don't do anything with this, okay? It is literally just there to tell you the name of the function. You don't have to do what you do to one side, you do to the other side. That is literally just there to give you the name of the function. So what you need to do instead, so basically you're ignoring the left-hand side of that equation from now on, and you're just doing what I just did with the other one. You're going to take the x, and what are you going to, see how it says find f of 2? It's literally just saying take out the x in the problem and replace it with a 2. So instead of doing negative 3 times x, you'll do negative 3 times 2. And that will once again give you negative 5, just like it did when I did the exact same problem. It was just said in a different way. Why we got to do nine different ways of asking how to do the same problem? You got to ask them. It sounds like something, that, you know. Somebody trying to justify their existence sat around, and I'm sure there's a good reason for this. But So even though it looks complicated and it's annoying because it looks like you should be doing something with both sides of the equation, 
It looks like it should be multiplication. It looks confusing. The actual procedure is very, very simple. You literally just take out the variable and replace it with the number that they tell you to replace it with. And again, you know you're going to be doing this because of that word, evaluate. That means you should end up with a number at the end. So on your classwork for today, on your delta math, there are two different types of question that you will see when you do that. Um, so I'm gonna, I'll am gonna i leave that up there for those of you guys that, that need to see it. So I kind of wrote you a little step-by-step. -step. All your problems are going to look exactly like these examples here. So for example, notice how, so this one says f of x and that one says g of x. So that's how you know which problem to do with which. Is anybody not okay if I zoom in on the next one? Okay. So I'll zoom in on this one first. So it says find f of 3. So again, don't do anything with that. That's just there to tell you the name of the function. So you're going to take that x plus 4. So I'm just going to move that down here. And what number am I getting ready to substitute for the x? 3, right, because it says find f of 3 is how you say that. So instead of x plus 4, we'll do 3 plus 4. So it is equal to 7. Looks complicated. The math itself really is not, folks. For today, on Monday, I'm sorry, on Tuesday, they'll get more complicated. But for today, they're really not that complicated. So I'm going to, I'll keep this problem up. So now for the G, so again, I'm just going to bring over that 4X plus 9, because it told me that G of X is equal to 4X plus 9. I'm getting ready to pull out the X and substitute it for a what? Negative 4, because it told me to find G of negative 4. So you're literally just playing a game of fill in the blanks, friends. We know that the negative 4 sitting next to that X means multiplication. So we'll do 4 times negative 4, get negative 16. Negative 16 plus 9 is negative 7, right? Yeah. This is why we were doing order of operations practice last week, because that's really all you're doing is you're just putting a number into the expression and you're following order of operations. So I'm gonna shush for a minute and give you guys, you've got two examples down at the bottom. Well, I've got you here as a whole group. Try those two, evaluate really quickly. I'm gonna give you about a minute or two and then I'll give you the answer and then I'm gonna shut up for the day and give you time to do what you need to do. All right, so this tells me h of x is 3x plus 3. So I'm going to take the x and replace it with a negative 1 because it told me to replace the x with a negative 1. So we know that we're going to multiply. So 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. Negative 3 minus 3 means I'll type a negative 6 into that answer box. And then for number two, this one is a little tricky. Even if you are like 100% positive, you think you know what you're doing, look at this one very quickly to make sure that you know what you're doing. Because even this one's got a trick to it, which is why I put it on here, okay? So it says to find f of negative one, right? This negative on the out, that is not attached to the x, okay? So what I mean by that is you're going to do negative 1 times, because that we know that squared means to multiply it by itself, right? We all know that's what that means, correct? Okay, so you are going to do negative 1 times negative 1. Negative times a negative is a positive, then you're just going to put that negative out to the side after you do the exponent. That is a tricky one. That's specifically why I put this on the notes. So square the number first, then that negative sign applies after you do the exponent. So that's really going to be negative 1, and then 7 times negative 1 is negative 7, so your final answer should be negative 8. So when you so square the number first, then if there's a negative on the outside, then apply it after that, okay? Order of operations, exponent comes after, you know, it's basically first on the list, 
after you deal with anything that's grouped together in parentheses. So save that negative until after you've done the exponent. Okay, I know some of you guys.